Hey everybody, BQ here with the Impact Lounge. If you are listening to this video as it uploads, happy Easter to you. It's uh, it's about the end of the day here in Illinois and it started snowing today after not having snow for a while. So uh, pretty crazy day here, but um, happy Easter to you if you um, celebrate. And uh, thank you again for swinging by the Impact Lounge. Please give this video a thumbs up. The way social media marketing works, the more thumbs up and comments, even thumbs down. Um, the more engagement in general that the video gets from you guys, the subscribers, the more it will organically spread to new viewers and we can continue to spread the good and positive word about Impact Wrestling. So let's see if we can do 100 likes on this one and uh, I'd appreciate you guys greatly for it. So I wanted to talk about the the ratings lately and I don't usually talk about that doing you know specific uploads for it. But I'm sitting here working on some content for the channel. Um, I'm leaving for WrestleCon on Thursday. Um, you know, driving down about 11 hours so I can catch the Impact and Lucha Underground show and then uh, <laughs> driving right back after. So I wanted to make sure I had some uh, content coming out scheduled uh, during the week. So I've got the Congo Kong interview coming. Um, reviews, we're going to start doing reviews of Explosion. Ro, uh, one of my co hosts, is going to be doing that. And uh, a few different things. Uh, I'm going to try to get a last chance re, uh, re little little review in there as well. But let's talk about the the ratings. So I believe it was, I don't have the number right in front of me, uh, 399,000 viewers. So um, almost 400,000 viewers, second highest or the highest since the final deletion. Now, of course, if you're comparing that to wrestling on Mondays and Tuesdays, that's just a fraction of the viewers. But in the space that they're operating in and on the network they are on, that's excellent. And what's been the knock on impact for a while? The viewership, right? And people forget that Lucha Underground and Ring of Honor don't even combine for that weekly. <laughs> but uh, in, all, in all honesty, those have been the hotter brands. And um, obviously, the Bullet Club stuff puts people in seats. But when you're talking about viewership impact has always done substantially better than those companies. What fascinates me is that this is just the first set of tapings and we're already seeing momentum and an upward trend. The last few weeks when the numbers have gone up, I keep, I keep thinking to myself, there's no way they're going to do better than that. It's not there's no way they're going to do higher. And then the next week they do. And I cannot believe they're almost at 400,000. And the president of Pop TV had said about a year and a half ago that with the DVR views, they usually surpass half a million viewers. So this whole narrative that no one's watching a show and everything is, is such BS. But for the first time in a long time, I'm starting to have conversations with people who are saying, damn, maybe I need to give Impact another chance. Don Callis had said the best way to build momentum was just, just put on a great product and let the chatter happen organically. Not to not to try to swing for the fences, you know, but to let it happen organically. Now, a guy like Vince Russo, who I'm actually a Russo fan, but he's always said you can't build buzz off just having a good wrestling show. You know, he's he's Mr. Creative and everything. And I guess that's true to an extent, but the more good you do and the less bad you do. <laughs> the more it will happen organically in your favor. I mean, that's the simplest way to put it. Now, what's still some of the negative things? You know, typos on a social media accounts, what I call marking out for themselves on Twitter, you know, using Austin Aries as an example to where he came back and it was just every single social media tweet and post was about Aries and, you know, giving themselves a pat on the back a little too much. Uh, I don't think that's a good look. Uh, not moderating their social media accounts. Now, Twitter is one thing, you know, you don't want to be blocking the fans on Twitter, but on YouTube, Facebook, you can ban people from posting. I do it all the time on YouTube because that's good brand awareness. That's good branding. You can't, I don't want to associate my channel with any kind of negativity or drama. So why am I, why would I allow it? Now there's the freedom of speech and you can have an opinion and that's one thing. But when you're outright trying to be negative and put the company down, that is not a good thing. And that's what you have to moderate. And that's what's really awesome about Twitch is that it's a heavily moderated platform when the big events are going on. You see someone post one or two negative things and, uh, you know, they're out of there. Another negative is the impact zone. 
you know, uh, I've only watched uh, half of this past episode. Uh, just uh, I've just been really busy with my kids the last few days, so I have to catch the other half. But um, um, right now I'm in the middle of the the uh, Lashley and Brian Cage show, and I mean, man, there's some amazing things that they're doing, and I'm not trying to put down that crowd because I've been in that crowd, but you know, some amazing things, and it's you know, sometimes you get reaction from them. You know, there's times where they do a great job and there's sometimes that it's like at least clap. You you know what I'm saying? Like I go to a lot of indie shows and you know, I at least, I I at least clap or give something. I'm rarely like sitting on my hands, you know? So it would be nice to see more of that. And that is more complacency than anything. And, and just being in front of the same people and the same people seeing you. So it's not a, it's not as negative as it, as it sounds. I mean, that's, that's just the way it is. You know, it, it's kind of like a stand-up comedian who goes to the same nightclub and tells the same jokes every week. And the same people are the, in the audience, you know, like, yeah, it's kind of funny, but you're, you're not going to react to it the second or third time like you did the first time. And then there's the small network, the pop TV network. And, you know, in all honesty, I don't know that they'll ever get off pop TV into a better network, you know, you have to have the numbers to show, hey, you know, if we move to this bigger network, then we're going to, you know, have this kind of expansion. And I don't think right now they're there. Now, the positive working in their favor is the digital numbers. And as the digital numbers continue to trend upward, you know, that's a good representation of eyes on the product. So there's still much to work on. But let's talk the business model of Scott Demore and Don Callis. First of all, it's a winner and it's working. And what makes these two gentlemen special is that they're successful businessmen outside of wrestling. They know how to build something already. Why is the Impact Lounge a success? Because I've already learned promotion and marketing and search engine optimization and brand building, etc. all from when I was an indie music artist. I've already had success doing that stuff somewhere else and now I brought it over to this channel. They're not inside that wrestling bubble and they've done the necessary market research to put on a more compelling product. The in-ring product is much improved and we're seeing some creative improvements as well, especially with Eddie and Sammy. I think, um, I think, I think we'll still need to see a little more from the creative side, but I think it's looking good so far. And it's been tough for the fans to see departures like EC3 and Lashley, but it's truly, I feel like about getting the TNA stank off things a lot of times. And while it's, you know, and while it does suck, what these guys are doing is creating new revenue streams, more interest in general. And they can go back to the old way under Dixie Carter and lose money and be a laughing stock. You know, if some of you guys want that. But why go back to what didn't work? Why hold on to intellectual property and try to sign wrestlers to exclusive contracts when it does nothing positive for the company? You know how many people are like, oh, they, they rolled over and died for the Hardys. Keep the gimmick for what? To prove a point to appease their current fan base that's already going to watch no matter what. For years, they were inside this TNA bubble, right? Other companies didn't want to work with them. Wrestlers didn't want to go there in fear of, you know, maybe not being considered for WWE afterwards or because they heard rumors about pay. They were just in this little impact zone bubble. No growth, no nothing. Stagnant. I saw someone on Facebook ask, and I've already talked about this once before. Are th- he said, I don't get it. Are they not capable of doing their own house shows? You guys, have you guys heard about the law of attraction? There's many different ways to interpret the law of attraction, but one of its general concepts is that you become who you surround yourself with. When you create positive and genuine relationships with people around you, other individuals want to be a part of that. These connections that they build allow them to reach out to new fans in different venues, but in a special manner. If the marquee just said Impact Wrestling come into town, big deal. I already watched them on TV. But the fans of these small indie promotions, when they know they're going to see the top Impact stars come to town against their local heroes and local villains, and the show's going to be taped for the Global Wrestling Network and be in 120 countries, it gets them excited. And that's what sells tickets, and that's why they sell out these small venues. 
How many times have you become a lifelong fan of a wrestler or sport, you know, athlete or celebrity for that matter, due to your personal interaction with them? Now they're reaching out and touching fans and building relationships, causing emotion. And what does emotion do? Emotion causes people to take action, to buy that merch, to get the GWN, to sign up for Twitch, to turn on Pop TV for the first time, to subscribe on YouTube, to follow on Twitter. Emotions cause reaction. And the, like the Dixie Carter product, there was no emotion. Like they, was, they were going through the motions and people were watching, but they weren't taking any kind of taking any kind of action. Josh Matthews just said they've already sold more VIP tickets for uh, the next set of tapings than they did in, in January. And they're still selling them. Now, granted, that's, um, you know, in line with the pay-per-view. But the numbers just continue to go up. In 2018, they've broken all their social media records with Twitter and YouTube. And they're becoming a company that people want to work with. They're not in that bubble anymore. The Jeff Jarrett model included bringing in guys from overseas for the sake of the in-ring product. So, you know, I, I had even said it too. Aren't they like kind of copying the Jeff Jarrett model and running with it? But the impact spin on it has included, you know, working with the indies and doing good business. It's not just about the in-ring product or to be entertaining. It's about doing good business. Josh Matthews in a recent interview called Giselle Shaw, who was really impressive in the ring, a future knockout. Uh, RJ City and the uh, crap, that, that Rockwell dude or what, Stone Rockwell, called them, you know, future impact stars. These companies are essentially serving as farming systems and now they can develop TV ready stars before they come to the roster. So people, the future is bright. They're on the right path. People have gone as far to say they're more excited for Impact versus Lucha Underground than they are for WrestleMania. Now, obviously, you can't compare anything to WrestleMania. But the point is, it's so unique. And we're getting so many first-time matches and something different and special. That's what causes people to take action. So let's hope for com continued momentum in 2018. I will be reviewing uh, Lucha Underground versus Impact when I get back. And when I upload the video, it's going to include all my pictures. So pictures I take with the stars, uh, matches, I, uh, pictures I take, you know, during the action. Um, I'm sitting actually right next to the, uh, the ring entrance. So I, I hope to take some good pictures and um, good things happening in 2018, folks. Thanks for listening. Hit the subscribe button. Give a thumbs up. Leave a comment. All that good stuff. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.